This episode can help out regardless of what stage you're in. Maybe you just received the news that your PSA is elevated. Maybe you have a history of an elevated PSA and have undergone numerous negative prostate biopsies already. We also have a lot of physicians who closely follow the podcast. Whether you are a primary care provider or a urologist looking to enhance your elevated PSA pathway with precision medicine, today's episode will have valuable insights including my elevated PSA pathway as well as my initial experience with a new prostate cancer screening test, the EpiSwitch PSC blood test. So stay tuned. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On the podcast, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. Not only am I the host of the Prostate Health Podcast, but I am also still in practice as a board-certified urologist at Kearney Urology Center in Nebraska. We utilize a blood test, prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, to help screen for prostate cancer. When I am counseling patients, I often discuss how the PSA is still a good initial check engine light for men and their prostate but it's not a perfect test. While specific to the prostate, there are numerous causes for an elevation in the PSA. For example, prostate enlargement, infection, inflammation, but also prostate cancer. Now in the past, the PSA was all we had in addition to a digital rectal exam, but now we have better testing to help give men more information to help them in deciding if they should proceed with a prostate biopsy versus just continue to observe. And I'll be breaking down my current PSA pathway in today's episode, including a new prostate cancer screening test, EpiSwitch PSE, which is helping predict a patient's risk of prostate cancer with 94% accuracy using a simple blood test, empowering urologists to determine who should proceed with a biopsy versus continued monitoring. So when should men start getting their PSA checked? According to both the NCCN and AUA guidelines, early detection of prostate cancer may begin with a baseline PSA test at age 45. For those at increased risk of developing prostate cancer, screening can begin at age 40. For example, those with black ancestry, germline mutations, and or a strong family history of prostate cancer. The PSA blood test is the primary screening modality recommended for the early detection of prostate cancer. Clinicians may also use a digital rectal exam or DRE alongside a PSA to establish risk of clinically significant prostate cancer. In terms of what PSA threshold level to use, the NCCN guidelines utilize a PSA of 3 or higher to consider additional testing. There are some experts that have even suggested using a threshold of 1.5 including a publication by one of my mentors, Dr. David Crawford, demonstrating an increased risk in both Caucasian and African-American men with a PSA of 1.5 to 4 than those with a PSA less than 1.5, and using that range as somewhat of an early warning PSA zone. Before we had better supplemental modern testing, there were a lot of men undergoing prostate biopsies who likely could have been closely observed when basing the decision to proceed with a biopsy on the PSA alone. I hope members of our Prostate Health Academy, especially in our private community forum, and I'm also available to members who want to message me directly there as well, and I can tell you from my interactions that men like to have additional information before jumping into a biopsy. We now have better testing available with prostate cancer biomarkers that can help give men more information on making an educated decision. Prostate cancer markers are unique blood urine, or tissue tests, which can assess your individualized risk, which we consider personalized medicine. Prostate markers can help in identifying if there would be a low or high likelihood of prostate cancer. I was definitely excited to hear about a new prostate cancer marker, the EpiSwitch PSE test, which is clinically validated 
and as of September of 2023 has been available in the U.S. and in the U.K. The PSC is a blood test that directly measures the presence or absence of prostate cancer. It is an epigenetic test that is designed to be used alongside a standard PSA. It works by combining five epigenetic biomarkers with the PSA value. I had utilized other biomarkers in my practice previously that definitely were an improvement over the PSA alone, but I wasn't completely satisfied with the level of accuracy as well as them being a bit more difficult for the patient to interpret the results in terms of using it to help them make a decision on how to proceed next. The new EpiSwitch PSE test, I felt, has the best in class in terms of accuracy, positive predictive value, and specificity. PSE can help men avoid unnecessary biopsies. Currently, on average, three out of four men who undergo a prostate biopsy for an elevated PSA, just using the PSA level alone, will not be found to have cancer after all testing is finished. That is 75% of men undergoing unnecessary biopsies. I've been utilizing the EpiSwitch PSC blood test for over one year now. It comes back with a pretty straightforward binary result, either low or high likelihood for prostate cancer. So it's pretty straightforward to interpret and for our patients to comprehend. If it comes back with a result of high likelihood for prostate cancer, then we can consider a prostate biopsy as well as a multiparametric prostate MRI to determine if there are any suspicious areas that can be targeted at the time of the biopsy. The testing may also help avoid unnecessary prostate biopsies if it comes back with a low likelihood for prostate cancer result. Now, it is to be noted that at the time of the initial discussion, men also have the option of proceeding with a prostate MRI as well concurrently with the blood test versus waiting to get the result back on the EpiSwitch PSC as both are mentioned at this point in the NCCN guidelines. Most men in my practice opt to wait to get the results back first on the EpiSwitch PSE test. Now, for the urologist listening in to this podcast, the EpiSwitch PSE test can be run with just two milliliters of blood. Our clinic staff has appreciated the fact that just a standard collection tube can be used, there's no special handling required, and it can be stored and shipped at room ambient temperature, which had not been the case with some of the other biomarkers we had used in the past. Also, there are no PSA requirements, as it can be run on any PSA level. There are no age requirements, and there are no specific digital rectal exam specifications, so you can either have it drawn before or after a DRE, really whichever works best for your clinic workflow. Unlike some of the other available biomarkers that don't allow you to use the test if a patient has underwent any sort of recent BPH procedure, or excluding patients on a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride, you don't have to worry about that with the PSE. You can run the test on any of those patients. In terms of the data for the EpiSwitch PSE test, really has had the best-in-class numbers. The PSE demonstrated a very high accuracy of 94%, along with both high positive and high negative predictive values at 93 and 95% respectively to assess the risk of prostate cancer in men. When comparing PSE with some of the other tests, when looking at accuracy, positive predictive value, and specificity, many of the other biomarkers are significantly lower than PSE, largely due to a dramatic number of false positives. This leads to more testing and potentially unnecessary interventions, including biopsies and the associated complications, as well as the additional stress and anxiety of a potential cancer diagnosis. Prostate biomarkers have also received support in prostate cancer screening guidelines. In the NCCN Prostate Cancer Early Detection Guideline, it is stated we should consider biomarkers that improve the specificity of screening, and in the AUA SUO guideline for early detection of prostate cancer prior to an initial biopsy, clinicians may use adjunctive urine or serum markers when further risk stratification would influence the decision regarding whether to proceed with a biopsy. EpiSwitch prostate screening test, or PSE, is based on the large prospective prostagram trial of the male population at risk carried out by the Imperial College of London and Imperial NHS Trust at Charing Cross Hospital the main reference hospital for prostate cancer in England. While male participants aged 50 to 69 underwent current standard procedures of testing with PSA, MRI, and biopsy, the EpiSwitch PSA non-invasive test was used after non-invasive PSA initial screening as a tool for early detection prior to definitive diagnostic tools such as biopsy. The results confirmed that in conjunction with PSA, 
The EpiSwitch non-invasive testing offers much more accurate early detection of cancer, significantly reducing the need for a biopsy intervention. Poor positive predictive value by PSA alone, only 14% of positives turned out to be true positives with just the PSA, which was improved to the level of 93% with the EpiSwitch PSE test. There has certainly been the need for better tests for early prostate cancer detection, increased specificity and accuracy over the PSA alone. The development of the EpiSwitch PSE test and its validation in the prostagram trial has come on the back of a decade of intensive work on prostate cancer in collaboration with leading UK clinical teams at Imperial NHS in Norfolk and Norwich University's NHS Trust, as well as the Prostate Cancer UK charity support. Insights have been obtained on blood-based biomarkers for staging, diagnosis, prognostic, and ethnic prevalence. Now, the PSA test is still a great initial check engine light for men and their prostate. Today, we talked about at what age we should consider getting started with PSA testing with an initial baseline PSA starting at age 45 years old, if no risk factors, and age 40 years old, if you're at increased risk of developing prostate cancer. Definitely know your numbers. And if you have an elevated PSA, be aware that we have modern supplemental testing available now to be able to use alongside the PSA, including prostate biomarkers, to help in determining the likelihood of prostate cancer and if further testing, such as a prostate biopsy, is indicated or not. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. For those of you wanting to dive in even deeper, make sure to check out the Prostate Health Academy, which offers comprehensive and easy-to-navigate lessons that I have prepared for you. There's also an active private community forum And I am there every day providing support, insight, and answering questions. To learn more, just go to www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on join now. Well, that's it for today. We will see you at the next episode.